It's fast. It's fresh. It's the brand new home to everything you need to know about one of the world's most exciting team sports. It's your inside track to world hockey. This is FIH Inside the D. During the next six months, we'll be following all the action and major moments from both the men's and women's game. We'll be getting up close and personal with the stars. And we'll be learning all the vital tricks of the trade, plus much more. But to kick this series off, we're in the nether regions of the Netherlands. This is the city of Breda. It's a hotbed for hockey and host to this year's Men's Champions Trophy. Here's what's coming up. We get the lowdown on the teams battling it out for this year's title. We meet the Belgian in a league of his own. And we sample the skills of some of the host nation's street specialists. OK, let's try. But first, for those of you who are new to the sport, here's your essential guide on how the game is played. Hockey is an 11-a-side game with five substitutes allowed to swap on and off at any time. The pitch is divided into four, with lines at the halfway point and the 23-metre mark. Players are only allowed to use the flat side of the hockey stick and can only score from inside the semicircle surrounding the goal, also called the D. A player can be tackled from in front, the side or from behind, as long as it's deemed safe. A free hit's awarded if a player kicks or touches the ball with any part of the body other than the stick, if more than one player attempts to tackle, or if a player causes an obstruction. If a player intentionally hits the ball behind the goal line, or there's an infringement, a short or penalty corner as it's better known is given. For a penalty corner, only the keeper and four defenders can guard the net. The rest of the team must be at the halfway line. If a defender intentionally makes a foul inside the D, it's a penalty stroke from seven yards. The match is played over four quarters, each lasting 15 minutes with the two sides swapping ends at half time. If the game is tied, then it's either a draw, extra time, or if need be, a penalty shootout. In a shootout, each team nominates five players who have eight seconds to score, starting from the 23 meter line. There are of course other rules, but this is enough to get you started. So that's how it works. Now it's time to meet the teams vying for the 37th Champions Trophy, starting with the champs. As the defending champions, World Cup champions and World League champions, Australia qualified for this event three times over. They've taken this title a staggering 14 times, are currently FIH hero ranked world number one and starters favourites. The duty of leading the team is now shared between the experienced duo of Eddie Ockenden and Aaron Zalewski. We just want to develop our leadership styles and make sure they're the best, best for the team. We want to serve the team the best we can. Argentina have enjoyed a fantastic run of form in the past four years and earned their place here as defending Olympic champions. As former world number ones, now number two, this is a golden age for a gifted team. Among them, Lucas Villa, a superb striker known for his goals and assists. Once you reach the, the maximum, the top, you always want to, to get that feeling again. Belgium have also enjoyed a meteoric rise in recent years. Denied automatic qualification for this event by losing out to Argentina in the Olympic final, it was an easy decision to include the world number three team as one of the three wildcard choices for this year's tournament, led by Thomas Briel. It's a really fun team uh, to be part of. Uh, a lot of guys play already uh, a lot of years together, so uh, we're also friends of the field. As hosts, Netherlands were guaranteed to be here in Breda, but are more than worthy of their place. FIH Hero ranked four in the world. Their trophy cabinet includes two Olympic titles, three World Cups, five European titles and eight Champions Trophies. They also have goal-scoring machine, Mirko Pauza. I'm addicted to winning and uh, yeah, with goals you, uh, you win games. As Asian champions and a country steeped in hockey history, India here is one of the other wildcard places. The eight-time Olympic champions are also looking to go one better than the silver they took at this event two years ago. Their skipper is goalkeeper Piyas Rajesh. Being a goalkeeper, I always feel like uh, 
yeah you can see the entire pitch and you can guide them so you are the you are a coach on the field India's great rivals Pakistan complete the lineup for this year's title the three-time Olympic champions and four-time World Cup winners are now targeting a fourth Champions Trophy as they bid to return to winning ways. The responsibility to make that happen lies with the legendary former Dutch and India coach, Roland Altmans. We started just a couple of months ago and we have a clear aims in the, in the near future, so we have to make sure that we keep the process going on in the direction where we want it. So that completes the contenders for this year's title. But there's one player who's won a few titles of his own. He's two-time FIH rising star and current FIH player of the year. It's Belgium's Arthur van Doren. Arthur, you got your first cap at 17. You've won many awards individually. What is your key to success? Uh, my key to success, I think uh, I was, or I'm still pretty lucky to play in really good size in club as well as uh, internationally and develop myself in such great teams. And what was it like going into a team where you were often the youngster? It happened often, so I was pretty much always the youngest uh, growing up. Yeah, which is good in a way because you learn uh, different things from uh, from different people with a lot of quality so i was uh, was lucky to play with yeah international stars from a really young age uh, which helped me as a player and as an individual you're the fih rising star and current fih player of the year what other players in the world do you think should be up there Whew, uh, good one difficult one i have uh, a lot of players that i admire and i rate really highly um, guys like uh, from, uh, from Germany, uh, Prasser, who, uh, yeah, who manages to score pretty much every game he plays in. Uh, guys like that are playing on a really, really high level for, uh, yeah, for a long, longer period now. So I think uh, yeah, that's something I admire and, uh, and, and that's why I rate them pretty high. And that's also why it's, it's pretty difficult to choose one best player of the year. Choosing one will maybe do others short. And hockey in Belgium? Where is it now in terms of the popularity of the sport? Yeah, it, it has grown uh, and we can feel that it's growing as well. So that's, that's a nice feeling. Uh, we see a lot of young kids starting to, to pick up hockey. We see uh, new clubs with our results over the last, uh, over the, the recent periods. The magnitude of hockey has grown and, and in the media as well. And it's a, it's a nice feeling. We're trying to make uh, our sport uh, bigger in Belgium. Looking ahead to the World Cup, do you think you can go on to win that? Everybody will be prepared to the fullest for a, yeah, for a really good tournament, so it will be a tough one. I think uh, we're really looking forward to it, to play the best, uh, the best teams on the biggest stage. And uh, it's, it's what, we, uh, what we train for, to play those games in front of uh, packed houses and, uh, yeah, and to be able to, uh, to play the last game for, uh, for the trophy. And it's in India. Are you aware of how important the, the sport is in that country? Yeah, I played. The, I was lucky enough to play the Hockey India League uh, only once, um, but I, I was really happy to uh, yeah to be part of that. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling to play uh, yeah, in front of the Indian fans who are always really loud, always yeah happy, and always uh, <coughs> making a big party of of the of the games, which yeah is obviously really nice for us. So it's uh, it's going to be a, a really cool tournament, and uh, we are really looking forward to it. Yeah. Arthur may be at the top of his game, but here in the Netherlands there's a group of young lesser known players who could probably teach him a trick or two. This is Team Street Hockey. Okay Luke, tell me how all this started. A teacher of us uh, told us uh, Dutch Hockey Federation was uh, bringing urban hockey to the streets, to uh, cities, uh, to make hockey more attractive uh, for people who never uh, thought of hockey as a sport. With the skills we do and how we show hockey, uh, hockey reaches places where it would never have been. And when we go into the city, on the playgrounds, there are just children who normally would play football. They don't know what you can do with a hockey stick and a ball. And uh, we show how cool hockey is. 
Sam, you may got an Olympic gold medal, but can you do this? Okay, let's try. Yeah. Ooh, look, look, look. <laughs> no. Oh. And yes, he got involved through Instagram. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, I got involved through Instagram. Um, of course, children like yes are very active on uh, on Instagram. And yes, he was posting uh, videos of his skills. Now I saw one of his videos and it was like, oh, he got a great talent <laughs> and we need him uh, to post videos on our channel. And Yesse, how often do you practice? Uh, every day. Yeah? Yeah. Do you have a favorite trick? Uh, I think just throw my stick in the air and get the ball. He's 13 years old. Yeah. For his age, he's excellent. When, when he came to Steam Street Turkey first time, he was really good, but he saw the tricks yeah, uh, Lean and, and I did, and he uh, catched them up so fast. Yeah, when you do a show at halftime, you have to have to meet the practice, but otherwise you can practice on your own at your own uh, own location. Every location is perfect to do your skills. Done a video with Artie van Doorn and with Thomas Brils. So, could, yeah. could they keep up with you? Were they good? <laughs> they, were, they were. They were good. Not as good as you guys. No, not as good as, <laughs> as we know. And hockey in the Netherlands. How big is it? It's, it's, it's big. It's I think the second biggest sport. It, it's becoming bigger. Even when uh, you see the urban hockey, street hockey is getting bigger. People get involved with it. So that's, that's really cool and more people like the things we do and they're going to practice it more. So, yeah, and I think it's, it's really, really big in the Netherlands. Now, if you think you can better that, why not film and send them into the FIH YouTube channel where you can also keep up to date with all the latest hockey action. Time to take a timeout, but join us after the break with all this still to come. We go Dutch with two of the women's team, perfecting the drag flick with the master of the art and reigniting one of the oldest rivalries in the sport. You're watching FIH Inside the D, where this week we're in the Dutch city of Breda for the 37th Men's Champions Trophy. But the women are also in action here. There's a Four Nations title up for grabs, headlined by the hosts who reign supreme. Three Olympic titles, seven World Cups and the current FIH Hero World number one, the Netherlands are the team to beat. And now time to meet two of them. Uh, I'm Marlies Ketels. I'm Lorien Deurink. She just does what she wants. The little rebel. I don't like rules, so I want to do something different. When someone says we go left, I want to go right. That's Lorien. What you see is what you get. <laughs> it's Marley. She's my better half. Yeah. She's uh, everything I'm not. I know yeah. you want to go right, but this time we go yeah. left. Come on. I think we have Lida by Welte. Yeah, she's a princess. She yeah. wants everything her way. Yeah. She can laugh about it as well. We say, no, this is too much princess. Yeah. Lida, it's her birthday. We give her a little crown or something, yeah. and she has to wear it. That's the joke. Or something pink. Or... Yeah. <laughs> Just for the Shiny. princess. Shiny. Yeah. <laughs> With diamonds. <laughs> and uh, Carleen Dirksen from Heuvel. Yeah, she's the clown. She's the funny one. She's always making a joke when we are talking about something serious. She's making a joke. Anna, one of the goalies. Yeah. <laughs> she makes the photos. Yes. <laughs> if you see photos on social media... It's from Anna. It's from Anna. Yeah. yeah. Son, she likes uh, the rap music. Yeah. And football. And, and soccer, yes. Yeah. She's our little uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. She played with number seven. Yeah. And in training, she, uh, when she scores, she's doing his, his yeah. thing. When he scores a goal, he has yeah, this yeah, difficult yeah, yeah. move, yeah. and then she wants to do it. But we're like, don't. It's enough. Margot. Margot. Yeah, Margot. 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 She's the DJ. Yeah. Our DJ. So we're singing and a lot of yeah, music we always play before the matches. Some are Dutch and really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Some are yeah. Dura or something. Dura. 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 <laughs> Dura. <laughs> 
I play with her in under 18, under 21, under 16. But it's just really cool to play together for such a long time. We pretty much stay the same, but we also grew up a bit. Yeah. You became up. a little bit less of a rebel. Yeah. I think I'm a really easy person to interact with. So that that's what makes it easy. Right now, it's the opening match of the Men's Champions Trophy. And what a perfect start to the tournament as two of the sport's biggest rivals go head to head. Whenever the, the games happen in India and Pakistan, that's moreover happens in the heart, in the emotions of Indians. If you lost every match, nobody cares. If you lost against India, everybody cares. I've met so many people, they always think, like, just crush them. You have to play really well, you have to crush them. We all know from 1947 onwards, they were separated, and before they were the same. So there's a lot of cultural history in both countries that are really similar. For the boys, of course, you always want to win, but for the nation, it's you. First match of the tournament is always important. It's always give you motivation because if I go to to see that as a Pakistan, so it's always make me emotional, so I can make mistakes in games, and it can affect my team. Smooth, good play. Simranji on the reverse is deflected, and Ramandeep gets the opening goal of the Champions Trophy 2018. It's not between uh, the players because we are always friendly, but during the match, both teams want to win. That was good play, great angle pass to Dilpreet. Dilpreet fires it home, and what a finish by the youngest player in the Indian team. The team which hold the emotion can win the matches. Always India, Pakistan, very high tempo. A lot of pressure, not from the inside the team, but the external pressure. comes India again as Mandeep goes in and Mandeep gets a third for India. When it comes to the nations here, there are a lot of stuff happening in the borders which are emotionally affecting uh, us and yeah, definitely all the Indians. So that is why uh, when that match happens, the players always feel like yeah, we, we need to do something for our soldiers as well. In a chance for a touch, he does well on the hooter. It's gone in and the goal has been awarded. So Lalit Upade gets a fourth for India. It is India four, Pakistan nil. Actually, we're number 13 in the world, and I don't think a country like uh, Pakistan, with its history, uh, should be on that level. For sure, they should be come back into uh, the top eight, at least. So that is our first aim, and from then onwards, we want to compete and, and get back to uh, medal level in major events. I can say that I'm proudest uh, citizen of my country. It's a huge responsibility as a coach. If you want to repeat the history, you have to make yourself as a history. So I think that that's our job to let these players should be also part of the history. So a convincing win there from India. Next up are the host, the Netherlands, who take on Olympic champions, Argentina. They have a star player who also stars in this week's Masterclass. Hi, I'm Gonzalo Peiliat, Argentina national team, and this is how you do the drag flick. My first step to do the good drag flick is of course to pay attention in which the goalkeeper is at the moment, where he puts his arms. If he has the arms low, maybe it's a good idea to flick it on the top, and if he has the arms on the top, maybe it's a good idea to flick low. My second point, when you trap the ball, try to come really close to the trapper, so it has to be almost crushing both sticks. And that timing is really important because that means the first runner is going to be far away from the ball and the action. My third point is to leave the ball behind your body. So when you make the drag flick, always you are going to push with the whole power of your body and your back is going to help you to have more power in the drag flick. And that's how you do it. So a perfect demonstration of the drag flip. But was it a perfect tournament for Gonzalo and his teammates? Here's how the event unfolded. 
Gonzalo Payet ended up having an outstanding personal time in Breda. The Argentine finished the tournament with six goals, earning him the hero top scorer title. Payet sweeps, that goes right into the top corner. His hat-trick in the last group game also inflicted a rare defeat for Australia. There he is, Gonzalo Payet with a hat-trick. By then though, the defending champions had already guaranteed their place in the final. An opening draw against Belgium was followed by wins over Pakistan, India and the Netherlands to ensure they'd finish top of the group. And Jake Harvey gets a goal. But with the top two progressing to the final, the battle for second proved an intriguing one, mainly fought between the Netherlands and India. The European champions recovered from a first match defeat to Argentina to put six past Belgium and four past Pakistan. And it will be a goal, Kemperman fires it home. But a second loss, this time to Australia, meant they had to beat India in the last group match to progress. And Blake Gullers makes no mistake. <laughs> Going into that match, the Asian champions have followed up their opening victory against Pakistan with a win, loss and a draw, but knew a point against the Netherlands would keep them in second spot. They go with Harman Preet, he sweeps to flex it, good save from Van der Ven, but Mandeep is on hand, and Mandeep has given India the lead. Into the circle it goes, it'll rebound, and it's shot into the goal, how did Brinkman get that? Honours even, so the draw seeing India through for a repeat of the 2016 final. And what a final it again proved. Comes to Govers, he sweeps. It's gone in. And Govers is the man to deliver this time. It's Matt Preet the top, it's ricocheting there, it's gone in! India have got a goal. Vivek Prasad is the man who hammers home the equaliser. One all it finished. The side still couldn't be separated after extra time. And so, for the second time in a row, the Champions Trophy would be decided by Australia and India in a penalty shootout. If he scores this, Australia have won. Edwards versus Srijesh. Edwards goes one way, Srijesh has pulled him a long way. Edwards lifts it over Srijesh. Australia have won their 15th Champions Trophy. Victory then for Australia, who had co-captain Aaron Zalewski named player of the tournament and Jake Harvey its rising star. The award for best goalkeeper, little consolation for India's captain, P.R. Srijesh, as he watched Australia lift the title for the 15th time. For the home fans, they had reason to cheer a day earlier. The Netherlands women cementing their place as world number one with a dominant display throughout the Four Nations trophy, beating Japan 8-2 in the final. So that's the Champions and Four Nations trophy wrapped up, but there's been plenty more hockey happening elsewhere in the world. During the next two years, nations from across the globe will be fighting it out for a place at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. For some of the emerging countries in the sport, the FIH have brought in an international hockey series to help towards achieving that goal, with the top two in each event going through to next year's finals. The first of these was held in Salamanca, Mexico, where Canada's women dominated the tournament, the hosts finishing second. The highlight of the men's event also involved Mexico, this time in a thrilling 5 all draw with the USA, who secured top spot against the hosts by virtue of goal difference. Singapore's men were winners on home soil in the first Asian series open. They cemented victory with a 4-1 win against runners-up Thailand. Thailand's women also qualified in second behind an unbeatable Malaysia. Zagreb in Croatia was the setting for the first European Hockey Series Open, with Austria and Wales finishing in the top two places, both progressing to next year's finals. Before we go, if you want to know all the latest hockey news and what's been happening on the FIH social scene, you can join the conversation on Twitter. And there's also Instagram, which includes some of the most memorable moments from the Champions Trophy. So that's it from Breda here in the Netherlands. Next time, Inside the D comes from London, where the Dutch women will be looking to defend their World Cup crown. Make sure you join us then.
to open the scores. Powerman puts it home. The Netherlands lead. Inside the D. Lovers. Oh, she's done it. Kim Lovers doubles the Dutch advantage.